Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, in this session we are going to solve a very interesting numerical problem of primary memory. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now the question states, consider the following circuit. So, basically this is the circuit that we are supposed to consider. Here, Two memory devices have been interfaced with a 3 to 8 decoder. Now, as you can see, this happens to be the 3 to 8 decoder, and these devices, D1 and D2, are the aforementioned memory devices. Now, we are to find out the type of these memory devices and the address ranges covered by both of them. So, basically, this particular question will test our knowledge which we have cumulatively acquired during our discussion of the various types of primary memories. Alright then, let's try to solve it. Now, first things first, we are to find out the type of memory devices, right? Let's consider D1 first, shall we? If we notice, the bus which is connected to D1 is a bidirectional one and it has a size of 8 bit. Now, a bidirectional bus means that we can both read from the device and write on it. That clearly means that D1 is nothing but a RAM or random access memory. Now, coming to D2, the bus connected to it is clearly a unidirectional one. That means we can only read from D2, but we cannot write on it. Therefore, undoubtedly, D2 is a read only memory or ROM. Alright, since now we have figured out the types of the devices, let's now move on to the next part. Let's find out the address ranges covered by the RAM and the ROM. Now, if we consider the address lines, they are A15, A14, A13, so on to A0. Now, before getting into the details, let's first observe the decoder. As you can see, the address lines A15 to A11 are fed into the decoder. Let's figure out the values these should retain first, shall we? Now, the address line A15 is connected to the enable line E1. So, we will naturally have to feed 1 through it to enable E1. Now, interestingly enough, the address line A14 is connected to the enable line E2 bar. That means, it is an active low connection. In other words, if we feed 0 through A14, E2 will be enabled. Now, the 3 to 8 decoder is completely enabled. Now, the input lines I2, I1 and I0 are connected to the address lines A13, A12 and A11 respectively. And to enable the RAM, output line O2 has to be activated which clearly signifies that through these three input lines, if we feed 0, 1, 0, the RAM will be enabled. So, to summarize, feeding 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 through the input lines A15 to A11, we can activate the RAM. Now, coming to the ROM, it is connected to the output line O6 of the 3 to 8 decoder. Again, for the ROM, the value given through A15 and A14 will remain the same, that is, 1 and 0, because that enables the decoder. However, through A13, A12 and A11, we will have to feed 110, that is 6, to enable the ROM. Alright, since we have determined the appropriate input sequences for both the RAM and the ROM respectively, now, let's figure out the address ranges covered by them one by one, shall we? Let's consider the RAM first. Since the address lines A10 to A0 are given to it, the first address covered by it will have all zeros in these bit places from A10 to A0. And eventually, the last address to be covered by RAM will have all ones for the bit places A10 to A0. And what about the address lines A15 to A11? Well, they will remain the same. Now, these are 16-bit addresses, aren't they? 
So it will be easier for us to remember them if we convert these to hexadecimal. So let's do that. Now we all know we will have to group 4 bits from the least significant bit towards the most significant bit. So 1001 is actually 9 and the rest are clearly zeros. Now what about the last address? Same drill. First, we will group them from the LSB to the MSB. That gives us this one as 9 again. Then 0111 is actually 7 and all ones is actually 15. But in hexadecimal, we use F to represent 15. And the same goes for this one as well. So the RAM covers the addresses 9000297FF. Let's now consider the ROM. Looking at the ROM, we can observe the address lines A9 to A0 are given to this. So the first address covered by the ROM will have all zeros in the bit places A9 to A0. And eventually, the last one will have all ones. And the address lines A15 to A11 will naturally remain the same. Now the question remains, what should be the value for the address line A10? Well, since it is of no significance for this particular organization, we will treat it as a don't care combination. Now what does a don't care combination mean? It means we can either place 0 or 1 over here. So let's convert these addresses to hexadecimal as well, shall we? Basically, we will follow the same method. So 1011 is actually 11, which in hexadecimal is B. Because in hexadecimal, if you remember, we denote 10 as A, so that makes 11 B. Simple. Now coming to the next group, if we place 0 in place of A10, we get the value as 0. And if we place 1, it gives us the value 4 because 0100 is actually 4 and the rest will be zeros. Now, similarly for the last address, this group again will give us B. Now, if we place 0 in place of A10, we end up having 3 because 0011 is actually 3 and if we place 1, 0111 will give us the value 7. And we already know this, all ones is F. So the address ranges covered by the ROM is either B000 to B3FF or B400 to B7FF. To be precise, the ROM will have two different addresses pointed to each of the memory locations. Interesting, right? Alright people, that will be all for this session. With this, we now have come to an end of our discussion of primary memories. I hope it was a fruitful experience to all of us. From the next session onwards, we will begin our detailed discussions on secondary memory storages. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.